meet the people of the High Altiplano in Bolivia. Their culture, their language, even their way of life is endangered. We live in this long-suffering situation in this country. The profit from cost of the product is not sufficient. We also need to buy medicine. Sometimes we'll help each other, but even that way is hard. Our husbands don't have other jobs. They work in the fields, but the income is not sufficient. The High Altiplano in Bolivia is a harsh country. It's hard for plants and animals to stay alive. It's an extremely hard way of life for the people who live there. There, there is just no options here. The, because it's cold, or they live dry, to get income, because there is no other way. They, they grow cows, yeah, they, they, they milk, but no, it's, no, no, there is no more income, more than that. Many people are leaving the Altiplano for the city, or the more profitable cocaine fields. But Alejandro hopes to save his people in their native land with a crop called quinoa. Quinoa is a, it's a food for most of the people in the rural area, and it needs some improvement. Alejandro is a very forward-thinking person, asking questions, how can I improve uh, the crop? And uh, he's doing that in the best way he can, using every, every avenue, and doing it with a cultural sense at the same time. To make this happen, Alejandro partnered with researchers from BYU. What we do for people, for farmers, we, 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 we produce seeds, we improve varieties, we produce seeds, we multiply seeds, we, we, we distribute the seeds, and they are planting improved varieties, and they can export quinoa. BYU researchers are helping accelerate crop yields through a process called genetic marking. This is where they examine the DNA to naturally find the seeds that are working best. Then they select those seeds for planting. The purpose of this is, is to look for natural disease resistance. Hopefully we will find characteristics that are segregating here and then find the genes at BYU that would be valuable. You can see here this one uh, versus that one we saw a few minutes ago. Look at the disease differences. These have got large lesions. So there is a segregation going on here. I want my genetics to go all the way out to the field. I want what my students do, make it to the field and into the farmer's hands, uh, getting an improved yield, therefore hopefully an improved profit. That's what it's all about right there. Seeing all the grain come out of this, all the seeds. Success here may save their culture. As we are able to improve the crop so that they can grow more of it on the Altiplano, then they can stay in their villages because what's happening right now is that uh, because of their inability to grow enough food on this pretty harsh environment up here at this altitude, they're moving out of the villages off the Altiplano into La Paz and uh, into El Alto. This whole project is not just genetics in the lab at BYU. It's, it's all the way through to a finished product to where the farmer is getting a benefit. One of the reasons why, why quinoa is so interesting is because it does have a high level of protein in the seed. In fact, it's uh, the perfect balance of amino acids for human consumption. In comparison to other grains such as corn, wheat, and rice, quinoa is superior with respect to its protein content and quality. Uh, Bolivia is one of the poorest countries in Latin America. It has one of the highest infant mortality rates in Latin America. They, uh, they need to improve their nutrition. They need to, to grow and consume more quinoa. We ask our visitors to support us with a market where we could sell our products at a cost that is higher. This way, we'll be able to send our children to school. And at the same time, they will help us. It, it serves several purposes. One, uh, improving their, their nutrition, but also keeping them in their villages and keeping their villages intact and their culture and their way of life. Adam Rodriguez, Eye on the Y, Special Edition.